Hey everyone, my name is Danilo Petrovic. I'm Ilya Marchenko. I'm Dennis Kudla. I'm Evgeny Donskoy. I'm Henry Laksana. I'm Peter Turetko, and, and you're listening to the Game to Love podcast. Welcome back, you lovely tennis fans. This one is an exciting one that we've been looking forward to for, I'd say, a whole entire year after our disastrous last uh, selections from last year. We went through the other week, didn't we? These ones hopefully be a bit better this year, JG, and hopefully uh, we've had our finger on the pulse a little bit more and we can predict the future this time. I think you're being a bit harsh. They wasn't that bad. I know we did a reaction to our 2021 ones the other day. Go check that out if you haven't seen it already. It was a good laugh going through some of our predictions. And really, they wasn't that that wow. far away from it. I know the Dominic team one was the big curveball. We didn't we didn't know he wasn't going to play the year. Mm. Um, this year, what have we done with the likes of Dominic team? There's so mm. many players. Radu Kani on the women's. Does, that, does any of us have her in her top 10? But... We'll have to wait and see. We're going to be doing both the ATP and the WTA. They're going to be two separate videos tonight. This one's the ATP. Uh, we'll be doing the top 10 and then the four oh. Grand Slam winners for the year. And like Ben was saying, it is an exciting podcast because yeah. I feel like our names are at stake a little bit. And it's, it's a bit, um, I'm not sure how far to go with some of them. So I've played some safe. Others, I've just gone um, a bit crazy, I must admit. Yeah, and don't forget, this is uh, for all the regular GTL viewers uh, and for some, if you're a new person watching, this will be a JG, uh, what is it, PowerPoint special. Yep. Uh, these don't come around <laughs> too often, <laughs> but when they do, we really have to uh, admire the handiwork uh, that JG puts into these little PowerPoint presentations. So <laughs> I'm looking forward to it, mate. I put my feet up for the week, and then uh, JG's been uh, scrambling around creating a mate, masterpiece. I'm going to be honest, it's the best PowerPoint I've ever produced, but by the oh, way, fantastic. on Games to Love. I can't the wait PowerPoint to see. skills have just gone through the roof. This one is a special one. Uh, before we get into it, I just want to give a shout out to people in the live chat. We've got David Barton here saying, I've been looking forward to this all day. Come on. We've got one of our patrons, John. Hey, um, how you saying, doing, John? Hell, Ben and JG. How we doing, mate? We've got David in the chat as well. Excited to see the pics. Hey. Uh, 12 Travel 21 mentioning the vlog there, saying Ooh. he enjoyed it. Um, and it won't be long to the likes of Rosetsky and Gonzalez who are asking you guys for selfies. Are we going to get to that stage? Definitely, mate. I think so. I think you're even uh, selling us a bit short. I think we may be going like Federer and uh, Roger, maybe Novak. They'll be uh, trying to clamor over to try and get a selfie with the You GTL. do realise you just said Federer and Roger, yeah? Fe I said Federer and Rafa, didn't I? No, <laughs> Federer and Roger. Federer <laughs> and Roger. Both of them will be trying to get over. Him and his wife. They will both be clamoring over to get a selfie with myself and JG, that's for sure. Yeah, exciting. Thanks for watching the vlog anyway. If anyone hasn't checked it out yet, it is. Uh, it's on the main video. We popped it as the main video on the page at the moment, so it's easy to find. Just go on to our main homepage, and it's right there. Give it a watch. Leave us a comment and uh, tell us your thoughts on yeah. me and JG in normal everyday life uh, on, on on a tennis exhibition tournament. So it was quite fun, wasn't it? Oh, I loved it. It was really good. Um... It was fun to to be there, not just to watch. And I loved it. Um, so hopefully mm. you guys enjoy it as well. But let's get started. And we're starting with the ATP. And this is the first PowerPoint. Um, first of many on Game to Love. Let's see if I can find it. Let's hope it doesn't <laughs> so lag you. <laughs> let's hope you're all right. Oh, look at this. Here we go. Look at that. The, should have gone into the mode first. Let's hope that it's got like a... Yeah, there we go. We're in the right mode. And God, I did the background just perfect. So it's right at the top. Nothing cut off this time. Loving it. God, it's making me more excited by the second. You're going to have to have a little bit more of a look on the live chat because I'm focused no on No worries. This. No worries. I will. I know you see we've got uh, Melez just joining us there. Look at this. Uh, one of the uh, GTL alumni saying this vid dangerously late. Uh, Gene Vish... Uh, vicious mode may be activated <laughs> so we got gene another Apologies, one of gene. our <laughs> patrons in the we're not too late though it's only what was it 20 minutes late that's not too bad for gtl standards 
Um, uh, unless but I think he means dangerously. I don't think he means late. No, I think he means dangerously late in the uh, in the year. Maybe I think everybody oh, okay. else has been putting out their ones, but oh, I, don't know. I see. Clarify so, that. I think it's early to be honest. I think we should could have held off a little bit longer. Are you ready? Fuck. Oh, damn right, I'm ready. No, oh, I thought that was it, but no, this is going to be <laughs> ATP top 10 ranking. So number the 10, suspense. who do we have? And just to clarify as well, me and Ben did these individually. I did mine yep. first and put them on the PowerPoint. Then Ben sent his to me uh, to me this morning and I added them on. So we've had no conferring on any of these, None. but some are similar. Uh, and that is just by coincidence, which is weird. Yeah, it's uh, very strange, but... Let's wait and see, because I don't even know all of your picks. I just know that the odd one here and there, because there were some that you just were like, no way. <laughs> yeah, I was just frustrated we had the same, but it was a complete coincidence. And I think we're going to start off with one, and that's going to be number 10. Yeah, We've both that... gone with Carlos Alcaraz to get inside the top 10 this year, uh, I say this year, in 2022. I'm just annoyed you stole it, mate, because I had it in there thinking, I don't think Ben's going to put him in the top 10. I'm going to look quite cool. He's going to do it this year. I'm pretty confident in him. Uh, but then you just sort of stole my thunder and put him in there as well. Yeah, I think we're both thinking along the same lines. Uh, I think it was speaking to David Ferrer that top uh, tipped it for me after hearing his wise words about uh, Carlos. It just inspired me uh, to think, and he's going to do big things. We already know he's done a Grand Slam quarterfinal already, and that was on hard court. I can't wait to see what he does on the clay next. So exciting year ahead, I think, for Carlos Alcaraz. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a big ask, but I, I really believe he can definitely do it. There's not a weakness in, in, in his game at all. He can play on all the surfaces. If he plays more tennis this year, goes deep in a few more slams, he can well, certainly get the top 10 spot. Like A bit like Sinner last year we were talking about. There's no reason why Alcaraz can't do it. In fact, I think it's more likely Alcaraz does it this year than Sinner last year was too. And it's weird because I nearly pushed him higher than 10 as well. That's uh, how crazy. And we got David in the live chat saying, Gil had him at number seven. Really? Insanity. Wow. <laughs> wow. So there's a high regard. That's seven's what... too much. Seven's I, a bit much. I was going to go know. nine. That was where I was. I was thinking, do I push it? I was like, you're pushing your luck now. Like if he makes it top 10, I'll be super happy. But nine, am I? I think, come on, I give some of the other players some credit as well because there's some long-standing, like, really good players on the tour. So I don't think you can be too disrespectful to everybody else. And Gene's very surprised there. Wow, Alcaraz in the top 10. Don't think Gene had that then. Well, let's have a look at number nine. And number nine, we've got something different. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let's get straight <laughs> into it, Ben. You've got oh, Rafael no. Nadal at nine. I do. Yeah, I have Rafa on the Dow. You need to explain this for me a little bit more. Well, I think I know. I thought you're going to need the biggest explanation on this selection. But when you on... sent it to me, I wasn't sure if it was a typo at first. But then you did clarify you do have Rafa at nine. Um, so now you can do it live on air and explain to us why you think that's what, think that's the case. Well, I was going to put like as a big controversy. I know you were saying, come on, stir it up a bit. And I was considering putting Alcaraz nine and Rafa ten. That would have been my big thing. <laughs> Alcaraz over to I thought, come on, look, calm down. Like, stop getting so crazy. So I went Rafa number nine. Uh, I haven't seen any signs yet. Obviously, he's just coming back from the injury. I think we've got to take these things into consideration and the fact that he is slowing down a little bit. He won't be playing as many tournaments as everybody else now. I think that he's obviously defending. Uh, I what, think he's what defending. What makes you think that, though? Why are you assuming he's not going to be playing many tournaments this year? I'm just concerned for his body these days. That's all it is. I'm just concerned that he might not be able to be playing as many as he would like. And we. As, as much as I don't want to say it, we could see like some gaps in his season again this season. That's that's the only reason I've got him down there is I think that we we could see him at big tournaments, but I'm not sure if he's going to be uh, a full tour in uh, 2022. And that's the reason I've got him down there. I, well, I don't know if you've seen to... the new news, what's just happened, Ben. Uh, we've got he's... Ollie breaking it right now saying, did you, hear, yes. did you guys hear that Rafa's confirmed playing in Australia? And he's playing the 250 next week in yes. Melbourne. That's amazing. I didn't it's know that myself. News. I've just seen it here. 
Did you see it before? This I message? saw it just before we came on. Uh, it was uh, just on Twitter, I think, and he's just uh, the announcement that he will be flying over to Australia, which is great oh, to hear. Which means so you happy. think he's now going to be playing the Australian Open as well, right? Fingers crossed that first yeah. tournament goes well for him, or at least goes without any hiccups. That's all I'm hoping. A like a a fit Rafa goes into Australian Open. That's all we can hope for. So hopefully he proves me wrong. I don't want to see Rafa like dropping down the rankings, but I know that there's a lot of other young players who are really, really pushing on the, these days. Hard to compete uh, with, and well, the young bodies as well. His body is uh, well starting to show signs of uh, getting towards the latter stages of his career. And that's that's the only reason for that selection, really. I had Roger, don't forget, last I year going hard. down. I, what did, I, what did I say last year? I, Roger, I had, what was it, eight or nine? No, you I didn't have know. him in there. I think you had him dropped out. I was right then. That yeah, was the you case. was right, I think. I had, it, I had him dropping a lot. So, yeah. And that, this is my same thought process. I know Rafa's a lot I think younger. Listen, I think you've, you're getting there's too much hate, and I can't wait it's for not hate. to prove it's you not wrong hate. this year. I think he's going to prove you wrong, Ben. I, I hope can't so. wait for it. So I'm happy you've got him at number nine. My one there, Hubert Hurkacz. It's a pretty safe one, I think. I'm confident that he's good enough to get inside the top 10. He will yep. be defending quite a few points with them big wins he got last year. Uh, I think he can back it up. He's got a good serve when it's going for him. Yeah. He's a very difficult player to beat and can play on all the surfaces as well. So watch out for him. Maybe at Wimbledon as well. Let's see if he has yes. a trick up his sleeve. I saw what he did to Federer last year and also beating Medvedev, Medvedev too. Yep. So her catch could do some serious damage at Wimbledon. And I don't know, it could be like a, a dark horse to win the whole thing. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, quite possibly. Obviously, he's he's looking good in big tournaments. He did quite well in uh, the, the Masters ones uh, as well. And uh, obviously won Miami, got to the semis in Paris, wasn't it, as well? So yeah. Wimbledon semis. I think his career trajectory is going up. He's 24, starting to hit the the sort of the prime years of his career now. So it's good. Good selection, that. Her catch. Yep. Number eight. Um, we've gone for something different here again. Yes. I've got Casper Rude remaining inside the top 10. You've got Andre Rublev hmm. uh, still inside the top 10. Yes. Um, I mean, the, the Rublev thing, I think he's consistent enough. I think he'll always be there or thereabouts within like semi-finals or... Not in, I mean, big tournaments like Masters and things like that. But I still don't see him doing that great in slams, and that's my reason that I don't think he's going to like push into like the uh, the more well, challenging those top four or five guys at the moment. So I'm having him down in eighth now. I, I'm quite. It's quite good that these two are on the same slide, if anything, because you yeah. can have a draw a lot of comparisons to the way they have sort of broke into the top ten. Um, Rude doing last year what Rublev did the year prior. I generally think right now, if you was to compare the two, I think Kasper Rude's the better player. Um, uh, Rublev obviously would give him the toughest match on the hard courts. On the clay courts, I wouldn't give Rublev a chance against Kasper Rude. Um, and I think Rude could even really push him on the hard. So it's a really going to be a, a fascinating rivalry between these two because they're evenly matched. I think Kasper Rude edges the battle, if I'm honest. Um, but so, saying that, he's going to have to defend quite a few points because he's we won quite a few smaller events, which means they're all going to sort of drop off if he's a, unable to defend all of them titles, which I don't think is going to be feasible because you'd think there'd be some tougher draws than what he was given last year with the Olympics helping him play some some easier opposition. So that's why I have him in eighth and not any higher than that. So sticking with the exact same position he finished this year in. Which would be amazing. If you can keep yeah. there, that's that's brilliant. Anywhere inside the top 10 for him is a great achievement. So for me, I'll have Rublev dropping three places. So he's in number five he finished this year. Uh, and I have him finishing in eighth next year. So um, on to the next seven. one. Oh, look, there you go. Look, <laughs> Kasper Rude. Uh, I actually think he's going to be getting better. I think that he's the younger player out of the two. And I think he will overtake Andre Rublev this year. I think that he showed signs that he can play on hard courts this year and he could even beat the likes of someone like Andre Rublev like we saw in the uh, ATP finals. So 
I think the sky's the limit. I'm really excited. I think he could actually make a good run at the French Open as well this year, Casper Ruud. So keep your eyes peeled for him. Matteo Berrettini, aside mm. from Djokovic, probably the best grass court player in the world right now because his serve is that dangerous. If it's firing, you can't stop it. And it just works nah. so well on the grass. He's got a big forehand as well. Um, and he just has all of the ability and power to be inside the top 10. The only issue is the injuries. If he can remain fit, which I'm hoping he can, for me, he'll be seven. He could even be higher. He, he needs to do. He needs to prove himself in the slams now as well. I know he's lost, I think, two of them. What was it? Was it Roland Garros? He went out to Djokovic and then he went out in the final of Wimbledon to Djokovic. Yeah, he seems to have a, a mental block <laughs> against Djokovic big time. Who and doesn't? that is the big issue. But say, <laughs> you never know. What about if Djokovic isn't in one of these slams and he's not, mm. he's not going to one of them? Could that open the way for a Berrettini? Because I think there's a lot of players like the um, sort of Sissa Pass and then players there who will, they, I don't think they necessarily will have all of the tools to beat a Berrettini, whereas Djokovic does. So if he can avoid him, he's got a really good chance of going so far in a slam and maybe winning one. Um, it's all about avoiding Djokovic for me. I think he has a good chance also in Madrid. Like Obviously, he got to the final against Zverev. It's perfect for the big servers there on that fast clay. Uh, if, if Zverev goes out maybe early, he, he stands a chance of winning that uh, Masters as well, I think, Berrettini. So yep. it all depends on fitness, though, I think, with Berrettini. And we, as we know, the end of the year, it didn't end well for Matteo Berrettini. He was injured, and I'm actually a bit worried for Matteo Berrettini. Uh, if I'm honest, coming into this uh, year. I think I'm not bit... so much, man. I think there's so much opportunity for him to pick up some points in some of their masters, sort of the Monte Carlo, uh, Madrid, Rome, them events there. That's where he can pick up some points. They're up for grabs and he didn't do as well as I'd have hoped in them events. I want to... to see him. I want to see him semi-finals, finals, even winning them. He I'm needs to drop... be pushing it well, deeper. I'm going to drop a bombshell. I think he's going to do it as well. I'm going to drop a bombshell because as much as I hate to say it, I think that this year is not going to be a very good year for Matteo Berrettini. Uh, I think that there could be... I'm, I don't want to foresight injury and stuff like that, but with the fact we've seen him injured and the fact that we have seen him underperform in some slams before, he is defending all those points from Wimbledon as well, so he will have to get to the final again to defend all those points. I, I don't have him in my top 10. Defend four what? To a, points. I don't have Matteo Berrettini in my top ten. He's what, got to defend the, Wim, the Wimbledon final. So yeah, he's and Madrid to, as well. Exactly. This is what I mean. And I think that he he could get found out by some of the other players on the tour. Like with the if his serve isn't popping, or if he does still have the abdominal issue, I think it could be a problem for him. And as much as I love Matteo. I, I don't have him in my top 10 this year. Sorry, guys, yeah. all the Italians. Uh, no, I think there. a lot of people agree with you in the chat. There's some, uh, I've got Am uh, Am Amalia here saying too many injuries for Berrettini this year. I saw someone else saying he's going to be outside the top 10, but I'm I'm here to prove you wrong. And ho hopefully Berrettini can as well. I'm having him at number seven. Uh, number yeah. six, we've gone something different. I've got yeah. Yannick Sinner. Um, you keep moving on up. I well, I can talk talk about this guy for ages. We could do a whole yeah. podcast on him. He's just phenomenal for his age. Yes. Just moves so well. Um, looks so natural on the court. I love all of his game. He can play on those different surfaces. I think he's going to get better and better. And he's able to really generate a lot of power uh, off both sides. And it looks very effortless as well when he does it. Yeah. Um, so much natural ability. If he plays regularly this year uh he's going to be one year older of course he's going to be a bit more mature grown into his body i think he's going to deal with the fatigue issues a lot better which was what i thought hold him held him back last year yeah if he works on sort of the physical side of it because mentally he's super strong works on that uh physical side of playing week in week out uh, and his body's able to adapt to it he's going to pick up a lot more points and that's why i have him at number six yeah, I think that that's a very good shout. Sinner moving up the rankings. Uh, I've got Hubi Hercatch. I know that you had him in at, was it nine? I've got him in at number six. That's I too think, high for me. I think he's moving up. I think he's moving up. And it's just weird that we've got these two. Obviously, these were the two Miami Masters finalists on the screen. And the screen. doubles, doubles partners. Yeah, exactly. How crazy. But I think that they're both 
uh, looking really good. When they're both in form, I love her catch on the grass. I think he's great on the hard courts. He's great in America as well. I think he has a lot going for him if that serve is popping. And the same way we talk about Berrettini and you have Berrettini high, I think her catch could overtake Ber someone like Berrettini just from not being as injury ridden as what he is. So that's my uh, reason for picking her too catch. too inconsistent though, Ben. He has a, mm. one good event and one shocking one where he could lose to anyone. Yeah, but I th With Yannick Sinner... He is more consistent and in the indoor hard courts, apart from Medford Evan, of I Djokovic, agree. of course, I don't think there's many better than him. No, I I totally agree with you that Sinner is much more consistent than her catch. And her catch, I think that there's going to be a year. He's only 24. He's going to be 25 next year. We could see a big year from her catch. Mm. Okay, fair enough. I did have him in my top 10, so not too different, but I thought the six was slightly higher. Uh, on to number five. And number five is, here we go. I've got Stefano Sissipas. You've got Yannick Sinny. You've got even one, uh, yes. one more than me. Exactly. And that's up. why I said I agree with you totally. He is more consistent than Hubi Hercatch. But I think he won all of those tournaments this year, four tournaments. He got to the final of a Masters. I think we can see him grab a Masters this year if I'm oh, in 2022 and potentially a deep run in a slam this uh, in 2022. I think that could be on the horizon for Yannick Sinner. Well, Sinner's getting a lot of love in the chat. We've got Anonymous here saying if Sinner has a killer serve, he could even make top yeah. three. Yeah, yeah, totally agree. He improves that and makes it like a Berrettini style. Maybe he needs well, to get his help, I think that's from, possible, but... help from his Italian brother. Come on, help, help, help a brother out, isn't it? So will he do it though? But you got no, I, exp Steph. I expect him to do well. I expect him to do well. We've got David in there saying, imagine JG as Rafa at number one. Of course, we've not <laughs> seen my Rafa yet. So people are, I'm sure, are waiting to see when he appears. Um, but he's not there yet. I've got Sissa Pass at five. Drop him um, one place there. Yeah, I, I don't really know what to say about this one. I think on the back end of the year, after Roland Garros, he wasn't very good. Um, no. You wouldn't say he was even a top 10 player off the form off the Roland Garros, but before that, he was one of the best on tour. So even it out, I've just gone, gone in the middle and f come up with number five. Um, Sister Pass has enough quality. Hopefully, he does something good this year. I'd love to see him win a slam. I've uh, got nothing against the guy. I think he's really exciting to watch. And I'll be happy to be proved wrong if he is to be higher, but I'm going to have him at number five. Interesting. So you got I've got uh, Sinner moving up five places from tenth to fifth, and you've got uh, Steph moving down one place from fourth to fifth. Okay, yeah. number four. Number four, and there's oh, he's moved over to my side now. There he is. Hey, hey, <laughs> Stefano. Still no Rafa, Ben. <laughs> well, I know it's a bit weird, isn't it? I don't know what's going on on your side? Steph, yeah, I think he's going to stay put. I think he's going to stay in uh, in fourth spot. I think he's going to have a similar year to to what he had la uh, last year or this year, should I say. I think he's going to start it strong and maybe tail off again. I can see that happening the exact same way again. So I'm sticking with, yeah, number four. I think it's fair. With my Zverev, I think looking at it now, he could definitely be a lot higher than this. Um, <laughs> definitely I think he can be it's, it's a tough one it's, a, it's all dependent on Alex Verev what's he going to do this year on his day he's one of the best he beats Djokovic he beats all of them if I'm honest um, he, he was even able to get the better of Medvedev towards the back end of the year so you never know yep. he could be pushing for that number one spot he could but indeed. I think there's someone who has the better tools for that and that's the reason I have him at number four Yes. So we'll move on to the now the the top three. God, yep. the big three. Uh who's gonna be at number three? <laughs> wow. Here we Here go. <laughs> Rafael now, Nadal versus I, Novak Djokovic. How many times we've seen this? We've both got them. We've got two of the big three at number three. I've got a feeling I'm going to have to explain myself again here, JG. There's going to be a lot of people jumping on my back, but let me uh, let me explain myself. Uh, there, there's part of me that thinks he's already got the the number one sealed up. The weeks at number one sealed up. He's got the Masters events sealed up. He's pretty much he's ahead on the Masters thing. I don't think Djokovic is going to play that many tournaments in 2022. 
I think he's going to be mainly focused on the slam race. And if he can manage just to get ahead and get in the slam race, that's going to be good enough for him in 2022. So I think he's going to be dropping. Look, he's defending three slams. He's going to be dropping points if he doesn't win those three slams again. That's my reason for Djokovic being at number three. Mm, fair enough. <laughs> he got out of that one. <laughs> um... I think my one's even harder to do it to justify, if I'm honest. It's a bit of a tough, tough <laughs> uh, task I've given myself. But Rafael Nadal, does he need any more of an introduction? I think he's going to have um, a very good year this year. I don't think the injury is going to be a big issue like everyone's making out. I think he is going to be playing a lot more events. And we've just seen that with the big news, which just broke. He's going to be playing in Australia. He's announced he's going to be playing at Melbourne in the 250. He's going to be playing these smaller events as well. He's going to be playing, hopefully, some more Masters. He wants to catch Novak Djokovic in the overall Masters. He's got so much at stake with the fact that he, he he missed so much of last year. He's got a point to prove this year. Djokovic played a lot last year. Rafael Nadal didn't. He's going to want to come back and avenge that loss at Roland Garros. I make him favourite for that. And I think he's going to surprise you in some of the other events as well. So Rafael Nadal, for all of the people who have written him off, just watch out because, and I'm, and I'm including you in this, just be careful what you wish for with him. I think he's going to shock a lot of you. And I'm, I'm having him at number three. Year. I'm wishing for a good year for him. I'm just saying Father Time catches up with uh, everybody. Uh, it's just about how you manage the tour when you do get to a certain age. And I think that's the key for both of those players on the screen that uh, we're looking at. We've got Michael Walker joining us. How are we doing? Saying, I say Nadal number two. <laughs> it's got high, <laughs> I to, it? That's the only positive Nadal comment I saw. So I had to just read that one out. But appreciate it, Michael. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, very optimistic as always. It's definitely not. It's not that out. crazy. I know it's not that crazy. Number nine, it's not that crazy. It's not that crazy. Rafael Nadal easily can be number three, Ben. I think it's going to happen. Yeah, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that Rafa could go on and go deep in... If he plays the full season and goes deep in each slam... It's he, dependent he on easily... injuries, isn't it? Yeah, it is yeah. dependent on his body. And there's part of me... The only reason I had him at... Obviously, he's had this injury. Is that foot injury going to be now perfect? If it's perfect, I worry for everybody on the tour. Because if he can run around and he doesn't have that pain he's had for the last 20 years, I think everyone wants to be scared. But if it comes back again, I worry for him. That's all. So, number two. All right, number two. Sorry, I was just moving the next podcast. because we will, <laughs> we will be doing the WTA okay. after this one. <laughs> Uh, so as okay. soon as this one finishes, we'll be doing it for the WTA as well. We've got Grand Slams to follow, but now number two, and who do we have? Oh, we got something different again. It means yep. we've both gone for a new world number one. There's Novak Djokovic yes. for me. I'm going to have him number two, and you've got Alex Zverev. I want to echo some of the things you said on Djokovic. The reason I don't think he's going to reclaim that number one um, spot is purely the fact that I think he's going to really struggle to match the intensity of last year. I, there were so many times where he looked down and out and he was able to find something just unique and special and just amazing at the time. Like, how's, like, not human-like. He's mustered yeah. up all this energy from somewhere. We don't know where he's got it from. I don't think that's sustainable. That model is not a sustainable model. And... For as much as he played out of his skin, I don't think you, he can physically be able to do that again. And because of that, he's going to drop off some points here and there. He's still going to have an amazing year. He could even nick a few slams. You don't know. But there's going to be some There's going to be some dips along the road more than last year because pretty much, apart, aside from the odd, odd event here and there, it was a more or less perfect year. And I think it's very difficult to replicate perfection. Yeah, it was it was close to perfect. Coming into the Olympics, he was having, I don't know, he looked like unstoppable. Uh, but it was maybe too much tennis. Uh, but you've got to remember, he sort of learnt uh, about his own body then, and he probably played too much tennis. If he takes a, a few breaks in, in 2022, maybe he'll, he'll be able to go for the calendar year slam. Who knows? Maybe he'll be able to actually do it this time. Will he be in Australia? That's another question we still need to find out. And we're giving our predictions without even knowing that at the moment, which is, that's the craziest thing. Yeah. 
I've got, I've got uh, Zverev there in my number two. I think the way that he finished the year last year, I was so impressed with him. I think he's come on leaps and bounds. I think that we could see Zverev in 2022, uh, if not taking a Grand Slam, getting to the final of potentially... I could see him getting to the final of the French Open or in either of the hardcourt slams as well. Wimbledon, not sure yet. Yep. Jury's still out on his Wimbledon. But I think he can go deep and he can definitely win. He's got the game win. for Wimbledon as well. He's got the game for all of them. He just needs to apply himself. Get a bit of luck, I feel, as well. He, could, he can win so he many Masters luck, as well. Zverev. He can, he can win Masters uh, for fun by the looks of it. He's already he's racking them up and yeah. he's still so young at uh, 24 as well. So, yeah, well, last well, but not moment, least. The moment we've all been waiting for. Uh, there's a lot of people wondering who number one is. We've got a lot of shouts for Roger Federer. Of course, we've not seen Federer <laughs> yeah, yet. Yeah. Could Roger Federer be appearing at our number one? No, he isn't. We've both gone with Daniel the Octopus Meg Medvedev. Yeah. Um, I was a bit annoyed that you picked him because I thought I was going to do this and I didn't think you had him. I thought I was expecting you to go Djokovic, but you didn't. Uh, we've both gone for Daniel Medvedev. Do you want to explain yeah. why first? I'm pretty sure it'll be the same reason. Yeah, I mean, for me, hitting now the the best, like the peak of his career right now, 25 years old, won his first Grand Slam and has now proven he can beat Djokovic in a Grand Slam final, which... I think that was all he needed to get over the mental side of things. Now I think that he's just going to be playing with freedom out there on the court. I think it's worrying for everybody else. We could see him he's rack a machine. up. Yeah, the, the guys I'm... are physically the guys are machine. Yeah, with a serve literally. like that, you shouldn't be able to move like he can, and he shouldn't be so good on both sides. And I just can't see a weakness at all. He's got serve wise clay. I don't know. Is it one of the best <laughs> serves? Like got yeah. to be top. <laughs> Top three, top five serves. Yeah, it's well up there. This, I can't see anything. I think his movement probably the thing what just bamboozles me the most. He's yeah. however tall, but he can run around like one of these sort of nifty players. Uh, He's like got the recovery Dimonor. skills, isn't he? Yeah. yeah, there's just everything. It's just a scary prospect. I feel if you could build your perfect tennis player, it would be Daniel Medvedev. Yeah. And, and I'd I think... even put that above, say, the likes of the bet. The, do you know the, the obviously Rafa... Uh, Djokovic, Federer, include Murray as well. I think I feel like Medvedev is actually. This could be crazy, but I'm going to say I feel like he's built better than all of them. Oh, he's got. The, he has so he has ridiculous amount of potential to be able to just blow the whole tour apart if he if he if he just is as a mental thing as well with him in terms of he has, he does a lot of um, crazy stuff and antics where he loses his head and that whole clay stuff as well. He needs to improve there big I time. I think he will. But if he can sort of improve that and can improve his mind and the, the way he interacts with the crowd, his sort of level of crazy, then definitely number one is within the realms of possibility. I think it totally is. I think we've only just seen the tip of the iceberg now for uh, Daniel Medvedev. Obviously, we know how good he is on the hard courts. We, we've seen glimpses of it at Wimbledon, how good he is on grass as well. I think Clay... He got his first win at Roland Garros, obviously, uh, last year. Uh, I think that's going to continue to improve and, uh, every year, the Roland Garros streak. And plus, he's never defending any points, really, at, at Roland Garros. So there's always the potential to to like make some back on the previous year. I think that he has a great chance. Imagine if he was to suddenly master Clay. I think everyone's screwed. <laughs> <It's true. laughs> if he is to master Clay, then the number one's wrapped up. I'd go as far to say that. Um, but yeah. yeah, let's move on to the next bit. We've both gone for Medvedev. I think the next uh, category will be the Grand Slams. But here is just a summary of our top 10. Um, anything there that sort of jumps off the page? Of course, the big one for me, you've not included Berrettini. No. We've both gone for Alcaraz inside. I've gone Rafa a lot higher than you. You've gone Rafa low. And I don't even have Rublev inside my top 10. I don't know if you've noticed that. He yeah. doesn't make it for me. I think Rude has surpassed him. And I think he's going to be really fighting to get back inside it. And we may see a week a year from Rublev next year. My prediction. He's not We've, started it in, in the best way yeah. either. We've getting, unfortunately getting COVID to start the year off. Well, we've both sacrificed a player, haven't we, for the likes of Alcaraz moving into that top 10. Now, you've gone with uh, Rublev. I've gone with Berrettini. And then we sort of kept the, the rest of them in there. So, But they've shuffled around in different uh, different ways. 
Interesting, though. You've yeah. gone higher than Djokovic uh, than, than what I have on this prediction. And I'm I'm just being giving my honest opinion on why I, why he will be there. It's just the amount of points being defended. And I don't think he even will care about keeping the number one now. I, that's my personal opinion. I know he said once he's got all of the year-end number ones, he's done that now, right? Brilliant. Now he needs to just focus on the next record, and that's the slam race. So he'll just be going ham at the slam. Right, let's move on. Uh, talking of the slams, this is our Grand Slam predictions. And first oh, off, God. in the year, not too long to go until we actually see it, and it's going to be Australia. We don't know yeah. who's going to be there yet, but who do we have winning it? And we've both gone for the same winner, Ben. Yep. Um, Daniel Medvedev. Sure. I've called it last year. It didn't happen. He got to the final. Uh, gone again. <laughs> I've not learned from my mistake. I think he wins this one. I really do. I was looking back earlier and I saw, uh, the. I think, I'm not sure it was the Australian Open or some tennis account was tweeting some of the highlights from last year's Australian Open. And in isolated incidents, I actually saw Medvedev's best tennis in spells of the Australian Open at the start incredible. of last year. And that could surprise you, me saying that. But no. there were spells of his tennis during that event which he did, he was unable to sort of eclipse throughout the year. And people forget that because it's at the start of the year. He, he bottled the final, was terrible against Djokovic. Yeah, but the lead terrible. up to that, he was outstanding. Yeah. So if he can just maintain that, which I think he will be able to, we don't know if Djokovic is going to be at the Australian Open as well. That makes, for me, Medvedev the outright favourite. Um, the only man he needs to sort of fend off would be Zverev. And I think he's going to be able to do it and win the Australian Open. I'm going to be quite bold as well and say, I think if Djokovic even goes uh, and does turn up in Australia, there's going to be so much of a circus all around him due to this whole vaccine uh, saga that is following him around. He's going to be so much media. It's all going to be off the tennis. It's all going to be on the vaccine. It's it's going to it's going to work not in his favour, I don't think. And I think that if he is there. Medvedev, he's going to be, I think he's carefree right now. He's won that slam and now he knows he can beat Djokovic in a final. He's managed to conquer a mental de like demon and I think he can play with freedom now. I think he he's the best on the court when he's free of worry and he's having fun. And you know what Medvedev's like. He, he, he laps it up and he will love it. If all the crowd start booing him and they want Djokovic to win, I think that will be the best thing for him. He likes it, I think. He plays up to it. So I think it's going to be exciting. I think that you, if Djokovic is there, we probably see the same final, though. I think it will probably yep. be a Djokovic versus Medvedev. And I think Medvedev we, will probably do him again. We've got a lot of people in the chat talking about Sverev saying his results at the Australian Open have been a little bit disappointing. Yeah. And that is a big reason why I didn't pick him. Um, you can see here Orchid Panda saying Zverev. Sissipas does consistently better at the Australian Open, and none of us are giving Sissipas a chance, it seems. Would that be fair? Yeah, I don't think he does. I start, him against Medvedev on hard court, don't fancy it still. I still think Medvedev's much stronger. Uh, if he can beat Djokovic on the hard court, he can definitely beat Sissipas. I mean, he beat him in straight sets, wasn't it, yep. last year? So Over to France, Roland Garros. And of course, there we go. Oh, <laughs> there's only going to be one answer. Rafael Nadal is going to win Roland Garros 2022. I'm telling you now, Ben, he is All winning right. Roland Garros. Yeah, well, there's part of Next me that year. thinks uh, Djokovic will now, this will be the one that he fancies, I think. If he doesn't manage to get to Australia or if he does and all this circus in Australia and he can't like there's just too much press and the media is too much I think Djokovic if he meets Rafa before the final he probably beats him again I think he will just use that mental unless Rafa can get it done in three I think Djokovic beats him that's my personal opinion because I think if he, the longer he draws it out the longer the rallies the more that you'll see him start to break Rafa down like he did in that other one oh, I know so you, Rafa you're fancying Rafa to go deep this year at Roland Garros well I don't know if he's like sixth or something in the season you might meet him in the quarterfinals so you never know. This is the thing. We just don't know with where it's going to okay, be. Okay, so you're expecting Rafa to go to a quarterfinals anyway, he, semis. He not could probably, go first he could round. probably, he could probably I don't go know, because you've not got him going very high in your rankings. I'm not sure could, where you where you sort of back put Rafa on the Dow right now. 
He could probably get to the quarterfinals of Roland Garros just playing with a single-handed backhand, I think. Uh, that's from my personal <laughs> opinion. I think that he's that good. Uh, he He's that good on uh, the I'm French not, Open. Listen, I'm going to have to call this out right now. Anonymous here saying Nadal's losing to a next Jenner at Roland Garros. Well, Alcaraz listen, Rafa. Let's listen, say. I think everyone just needs to calm down. They're getting too carried away with all of these Rafa injuries and everything else. It's Roland Garros. The geezer's 103 there. Yeah. He's not gonna. He's not gonna just completely capitulate uh, at Roland Garros next year. No, never. I'm gonna be nervous, more nervous than ever watching him. But I'm he could still win it if, if he goes in fit. He, has he a needs chance. to be 80 percent fit. That's all he needs. 80 yep. percent fitness, and he's gonna have a real good shot of winning this Roland Garros. I don't even think 80. I think less. I think I think I, think he can go in with 65 percent. I reckon, and he could still have a shot of winning the whole thing if he gets them all done in straight sets. I think he can, that's the way he does it, and that's how he did it the last time he won it. All straight sets. I think that's how he needs to do it. Well, I po- just apologies. I got that wrong. It's actually 105 for him, <laughs> uh, Rafa. Ah, even, even more absurd. I remember when it was 100, <laughs> but he's gone off as a few more. Yes, um, but yeah, true. let's just let's just wait and see with that. I'm going Rafa. Um, you never go against the god of clay on clay. Do he's it at your own peril. I won't be saying no, he's a god. He's been upgraded. Let's oh. move on to the next slam because we're running out of time. Uh, and yep. this is Wimbledon. We've both gone for the same. Yep. Uh, you, well, you've got to agree. For me, Roger, growing up, was sort of the king of Wimbledon. I think he's losing that throne. Uh, yeah. and l- losing that crown, sorry, to this man here, Novak Djokovic. He was just, he won it at a canter last year. Yeah. Uh, Berrettini took a set off him in the thing, but really, a bit like I was saying with Rafa at Roland Garros, I just don't see anyone stopping him at Wimbledon. I think it's sort of nailed on that he wins it. Well, this is the one he's going to be looking towards. Uh, out of all the ones in the whole year, you probably think Djokovic thinks that one. If I don't win that, that is a disappointing year for me. If I don't take the Wimbledon crown, because last year it wasn't even a competition, was it? Yeah. Let's be fair. Let's be fair. I mean, Berrettini took a took a set, but it was never in doubt, was it? But it wasn't the most exciting event for me because he just blitzed everyone from minute yeah. one. That Martin Futsovic one sort of um what's the word? Encapsulated the whole event. It was yeah. just lackluster and he was just too good. It was just not fair. Just it wasn't much of a competition because there was sort of Djokovic and the rest of the field, and there was no one near him. So that's why I had him. Uh, I have him win him this year. I think no one's going to be able to stop him, uh, and that's going to be the case. Uh, moving on to the last slam, the US yep. Open. I just want to make a note right now, Ben. So if you're yep. looking at it, I do have uh, Rafa. Djokovic, they're both on 21 Grand Slams so far for me. Oh, no. So then there's no one out in the lead, just uh, to clarify. Here we go. This is you're setting me up for... No, I'm not setting you up for anything. I don't have Rafa winning the US Open. Well, I've got Djokovic on 22 right now. So I have Alex Zverev. Alex Zverev to win the US Open. He got to the final against Dominic Team. This is his chance. This is where he's going to win his first one. I know you've gone Daniel Medvedev again. Yep. Um, I think Medvedev, he's not gonna he's not gonna uh keep keep the title. He won it last year. I don't think he's gonna win it again back to back. It's a big I... ask being in back to back. I'm not sure if Medvedev's up for it. And I think Zverev coming to the end of the year, he's gonna see uh Medvedev win another slam this year. Some of the big free wins. I mean, he's like, you know what? I need to win one. He's running out of time. He's gonna win one, the last one of the year, and Zverev's gonna do it. Well, you'd be surprised that this was this was sort of defining in my choosing my rankings as well because I was I went for Medvedev as world number one at the end of the year due to the fact I have him winning two two grand slams he's defending this one I actually did go in and my first initial thought was Zverev and then I changed it and I thought the new rivalry in tennis right now not to be disrespectful to Rafa but Djokovic said it just because of the injuries and stuff of last year that Medvedev is his, sort of his main rival on tour at the moment. And I think we're going to see uh, two slams for Djokovic, two slams for Medvedev, and the rivalry continue for another year. So I'm just reading the comment. Ben does bamboozle me sometimes as well, I must admit. So Ben has Djokovic winning two grand slams and Zverev zero, but has Zverev finishing above Djokovic in the rankings? Yeah, yeah. well, we think he's defending 
both of the slams he's going to win, and he's not going to win yeah, the other one. Is, It'll be yeah. all right. <laughs> It'll be all right. Yeah, Jack. but then if yeah, but then if he doesn't play any other tournaments, There's a lot of points, year, two grand slams. Yeah, but if he doesn't win the Paris Masters again, he'll drop all those points. And then you've got to think, Zverev, he's probably going to pick up a lot more tournaments throughout the year. That's my personal. And he will go deep in the Grand Slams he hasn't before. Because if you remember from when I said about his ranking, I think he might get to the final of Slams. I don't think he's going to win the Slam this year, though. Okay, there I, you go. You I, heard it from Ben there. Um, I do have Med, uh, Zverev winning the Slam this year. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with that prediction. We've got a few people saying Sinner could do something pretty crazy at the US Open. Anonymous saying Sinner's going to make his first slam final at the US. Mark Possible. my words. Oh, interesting. Could happen. I remember that. Keep it in mind. Yeah, I think that it's uh, Zverev has a very good possibility to win a slam, uh, I think. But I still think that he's going to he can get deep in slams. He's only ever made one slam final before. I think we could see, I think Roland Garros, mate. I think people don't talk about him on the clay enough. He's an amazing clay court player, Zverev. So I think that could be the, the shock that you might see him in the final of Roland Garros this year or the coming yeah, year. So Let's see how the draw um, favours these players because I'm hoping the Dow doesn't get too much of a tough draw at Roland Garros. That's mm. why I'm hoping he can do something good in Australia <laughs> just to pick up some points. But uh, let's wait and see. Uh, but that is our men's predictions. Let us know your predictions in the comments section or in the live chat right now. Um, and yeah, uh, thank you for watching, guys. We will be moving over to the women's now and doing the exact same thing we've just done for the men's. Uh, if you haven't already, make sure hit the like button on this video. Subscribe if you're new. Share with all your friends. Uh, let's try and grow the GTL community. And we do have some very exciting things happening on the GTL community. I'll let Ben uh, tell you about them right now. Yes, we do. Uh, we're going to be doing a giveaway off. Well, I'll say our first big giveaway on the channel. We do have two grand tier tickets for Roland Garros uh, in this 2022 year that is coming up. These are tickets which can uh, give you access to four days of the event of your choosing. And there's going to be two tickets up for grabs. But keep your eyes on the channel. Make sure you've subscribed to the channel. Make sure you've uh, followed us on social media. Uh, this will all help with being uh, a part of. There's going to be like a sort of like a like an entry list yeah. and stuff to be able to get like try and win the giveaway. Let's say there's going to be you can get a certain number of entries for all of the different bits and pieces you do uh, over all of our social media channels and on YouTube too. So we'll be putting out something, uh, an actual video explaining the whole thing in the next couple of days. Uh, so keep your eyes peeled on the channel. It's exciting, yeah. that one, mate. It is really think. exciting. It's going to be a serious prize we're giving away. <laughs> so make sure you enter if you haven't. Um, and like Ben was saying, the best way, follow us on all the socials, subscribe to the channel, and you'll find out when, we, when we're actually doing it. Uh, but for now, we'll see you on the next podcast. Happening in about five minutes' time. Uh, there's our ATP predictions. And now let's roll on 2022. Come on. See you guys. See you in a minute.